Let's have a closer look at the entire interface. We just switched around between the arrangement and the session view over here. This is the session view. can actually show you how you get your quick ideas from the session view into the arrangement view. Let me just quickly delete this clip over here. We are not going to use that one for now. But we could put in another nice sample and then we have a cool sound. So let's um, quickly go back to one of the prepared samples this folder down here, select another audio file, that one, and drag it onto a new gray area over here, we'll create an audio clip. Taking down the volume a bit over here, by the way this knob is uh, panning, left right, panorama, this one is activate, deactivate the track, solo the track, no other tracks playing, activate MIDI. Let's play it all together. Just to complete that thing and have a nice sound for our ongoing tutorial, I'm going to load in this pads test audio file as well, just the way I did before. And taking down the volume a bit, taking down the volume of this MIDI clip for now a bit as well. It's playing, playing this all together. Now I can take this little beat, select this entire area, or those things over here are called scenes, and if I want to edit it a little more, if I'm happy with this first idea, I can drag this entire scene, hover over this toggle over here for the arrangement view, and then go into this area and just place everything in here. So now we have those clips, if we open up the other audio tracks down here, we have those clips actually showing up over here. And this toggle gives you the opportunity to switch between playback of the session view and the arrangement view. So if I click on this orange toggle, they will leave the gray section and, and they are showed up all the way. That's what we are going to play back over this time over here. So if I click into this area and I hit play, you see we are playing back this information. If I go to this area where you see the magnifier and I click into it, drag down my mouse, I can open it up and zoom in a bit more and now there's one thing I wanted to show you in this arrangement view over here. If you select an area on a MIDI channel, this right now is a MIDI channel. Why do I know it's a MIDI channel? If I double click, it shows an instrument over here. If you have an instrument showing up you're on a MIDI channel, if I go to an audio channel, I can only see effects because the sound is already there. So that's what makes the difference between a MIDI and an audio channel. If I go back on this MIDI channel, I can select an area over here, and if I have it selected, I can right click, cut, copy, duplicate, delete, consolidate, insert a MIDI clip. I could actually insert a MIDI clip. And you see I can also loop the selection and change the view of the grid to a little more narrow and a little wider. Let's insert a MIDI clip. So we have a new clip showing up over here. Right clicking on that one, you can rename it, call it, I don't know, new clip or something. And double clicking on that clip, 
will show you the clip down here where you can put in more node information. So this is how you create MIDI clips in Ableton. If you're coming from other doors, that might not be obvious, but that's how it works. And you can activate this headphone over here. And if you put on this channel, activate this channel, you will actually listen to something we are playing. So that's not needed. I just wanted to show you how to create a MIDI clip Let's deactivate it and go through the other things in the interface. We had a look at the browser already. So we had instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, plugins, and samples. Also, if you have Ableton Suite, that one ships with packs. If you go on packs and you have some of them installed, like I have some of them installed over here, you can select a lot of sounds that ship with the Ableton Suite pack. Over here we have our overall speed or BPM of the project. Those knobs are the tempo nudge down, tempo nudge up knobs that basically help you in live mode adjusting to a real band or something. Over here we are having our signature right now. We have 4 to 4 signature at the moment which we are using in dance and electronic music for example. This one is our metronome. So if we activate that, it will always play when we record or play something. If I play here, like this speaker showing up and I can play from here. So this metronome really helps you record in sync. This knob just shows you how you want to quantize. We are going to talk about that later. Over here we have our transport view, basically showing you the current position of the locator here, the playback, the play button, the stop button, the record button. If you want to record MIDI or audio, in that case, if you want to record MIDI, for example, on this clip over here, and you have an external MIDI controller or keyboard to just arm this MIDI channel and like put it on and then now I would hit some knobs on my push controller to my right over here. So let's quickly just do that and see what's going on. Very nice. You see, um, at a very low volume, I just recorded random notes that had nothing to do with everything else, but they're inside here. You can see them. If you look into the area over here, you can see the notes I pressed on the controller, and I could now go ahead and edit them somehow. We're not going to work with those right now. I just wanted to show you the function, so I'm going to right-click and um, delete this clip. If you hover over the beginning or the end of the clip, you can actually drag them longer. This function over here is called, let's open the info view back up. And you can drag this longer or shorter. If I hover over this knob, it shows overdub. We're talking about overdub later. And this is the automation arm. So if you automate information, that means automating the change of knobs like the volume or the cut off of a filter or something or the dry wet how much do we apply a reverb sound over time so we can actually record the movement of this knob over time that's an automation over here we have our loop controls and those are really important if you're working on a specific area of a song, for example, this area. You can go ahead and select a clip, right-click and say loop selection. And then you will see those controls over here, the start locator, the finish locator. And if this window, if this button over here is active, it will loop that thing infinitely. my spacebar to stop the playback. 
This control over here allows you to draw. This opens up the draw mode. So I'm drawing wherever you can draw something, you would start drawing. Over here, for example, in a reverb dry wet automation, I just drew in an automation with this draw button. If I unselect that one, you can also go into a MIDI clip and if you're in draw mode, you can actually draw notes. This is um, the usual mouse cursor deleting them with our backspace key on the keyboard. And those are a couple of controls for MIDI mapping. We are going to talk about that later. This bar actually shows how much CPU you're using right now. This shows you when you're loading stuff from your hard drive, from your disk, and when you're at overload. And those little information panels show you if you're triggering MIDI, now I'm hitting a couple of keys on my controller here. This is the toggle between session and arrangement view. If we go down here, we have some show hide sections, as you can see down here in the info. So we have show hide in out section, which is basically this one over here. We can toggle it on and off, show more information. This is the return channels, it's actually a reverb and a delay you can put on any of those tracks called send and return. We're going to talk about that later. This is the mixer section where you can put, like those are actually the volume controls. They look a little different in the arrangement view than in the session view. In the session view they look like actual volume controls here, faders. Like, see, I'm moving up that fader, but if I go to the uh, arrangement view right now, you see this value has changed to zero decibels, which is like the default value for every meter in Ableton. If I drag it down, this is basically the same thing. This is the volume gain meter over here, just looking a little different from that view down there. So those are our meters. We can turn them on and off off with this knob and this is track delay you can turn that on and off as well for example if you record audio you record vocals and your vocalist is always a little bit late compared to the entire song or something is a little late you can simply adjust the milliseconds that one comes earlier compared to the other tracks for example if i were to take my drum beat a little earlier drag down this a couple of milliseconds and play it back. You see that doesn't sound right because everything was recorded correctly. So we can click on this arrow. The orange arrow will always take your values back to the init value. Also over here, if you put it to the left panning, this is the panning knob actually, put it to the right click on this little arrow, takes you back to the center. So this is always the default value. Okay, down here, this arrow opens up the device or MIDI or clip view. If you want more overview over your arrangement, you can turn it off, turn it on. Like I showed you over here, you see devices and the clip information. If you click on any clip, it will always show down here. That's very cool. So you get precise information to that clip. If you double click on a clip and it opens up over here, also in this clip view, if it's an audio file, you have those controls. You can manipulate your audio file over here. For example, transpose it or take down the volume in here or change the length and the positions and the warping like the syncing to the beat in this area. If you have a MIDI clip selected like that one this changes a bit. You have a MIDI control area in this clip view and you can change like the name over here. You can also change the signature, the looping, turn off the looping for example, turn it on 
and you can manipulate all the things concerning that clip you selected. So everything in this clip will be available for change over here. This one over here as well. So I hope you enjoyed this simple tutorial so far. We are going to make more of those starters tutorials. We also put together a course where we are making a complete track in Ableton Suite from scratch. Check the description if you're interested in that one. Follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you next time.